In this video, we're going to talk about how to account for an exchange of non-monetary assets. So what are we even talking about here? Well, let's say that you have a truck and you decided that you don't want that truck anymore. You'd actually like to get a different type of truck. So one thing you could do is you could sell this truck for cash and then take that cash and go buy the kind of truck that you want. But another thing you could do is, let's say you found a company that had the kind of truck you wanted, you could actually go and swap your truck for that other company's truck if they want your truck, right? So you could just go and engage in some kind of swap, and you might even throw in a little bit of cash as a sweetener. But the question is, how do we account for this asset swap here, right? Because we're actually swapping out a truck for another company's truck. So how would we account for that? And that's basically an exchange of a non-monetary asset. And basically, we're going to record the asset received, the truck that we receive, at its fair market value. Okay, so we're going to estimate the fair market value, and that's what we're going to bring onto our balance sheet. And then we're going to have to get rid of our asset at its cost and the accumulated depreciation, etc. Now, after doing all that, we might have a gain or loss that we would have to recognize. So this is, ba this is our basic formula for how we're going to account for some kind of exchange. And the exchange doesn't have to be a truck for a truck. It could be a truck for inventory or something like that. But we're always going to account for it at fair market value, and then we're going to book a gain or a loss unless one of three conditions applies. If we can't determine the fair market value of the asset that we're receiving or the one that we're giving up, then we can't do it this way, right? And we'll do it another way, and I'll have a different video on what we talk about when we don't do it like this, but I just want to you know, give you highlights right now. So if the transaction lacks commercial substance, and this is an important term, by commercial substance, it basically means if there's going to be no change in the future cash flows uh, of your firm, basically uh, for doing this transaction, then they say, like, look, this transaction really doesn't have any economic substance to it, and so we're not going to allow you to book a gain or a loss because the, the fear is that companies might somehow, you know, take a truck, swap it for some other truck, and it's really not going to change the cash flows or anything, but they're trying to, you know, recognize or book some phantom gain or something to boost their profits. So they're always, there has to be commercial substance for you to recognize a gain or a loss. And then also, if the exchange is made to facilitate sales to customers, we're, we're going to do it a different way uh, than, than this right here. Now, I'll, I'll actually have a video on each of these, so we can talk about that. But for right now, let's just focus on this bread and butter situation of when we, have, when we don't have one of these three conditions applying, when we're going to record the asset received at its fair market value, and then we're going to book a gain or a loss. So let's walk through an example and make it a little easier for you to understand. So let's say that we have, for our example, Thompson Trucking, and Thompson Trucking is going to give a delivery truck. So they've got a delivery truck. They're going to give it to Bonnie's Catering. All right? So that delivery truck has a fair market value of $4,250. Okay? Now, the original cost of that truck, when Thompson originally bought the, the truck years ago, it was $22,000. But since that time, Thompson has taken $18,000 in depreciation on the truck, right? So we say that there's $18,000 in accumulated depreciation on the truck. And why this is all going to be relevant is going to be apparent in a minute when we go to do the journal entry. But let's just finish this transaction. So now, what is Thompson getting in exchange? You're giving up a truck that they say is worth $4,250 to this catering company. Well, in exchange, the catering company says, look, we will provide food, let's say, to your company picnic for Thompson Trucking. They're going to provide food. They're going to cater that uh, picnic. And that food, they say, you know what, the food, it's really a fair market value. Of that food is about $3,000. Uh, and, and that's short, right? So now they've got 3000 of food. But they're getting a $4,250 truck, so they say, you know what, well, we'll give you $1,250 cash as well. And obviously the fair market value of cash is the same value, just $1,250, right? That's the fair market value of cash is just whatever the cash is. So basically we got $4,250 worth of fair market value of assets going in exchange for another $4,250 in assets. Now, let's account for these transactions from the perspective of Thompson and from the perspective of Bonnie's. And I want to focus on Thompson, Thompson first. So basically Thompson, in terms of what they're going to debit, right? they're going to debit food for $3,000. Remember, we recognize the asset received as fair market value. So they're getting fair market value food, $3,000. Fair market value cash, $1,250. 
now they have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation associated with that truck, right? And that's $18,000. Now, accumulated depreciation increased with the credit, so we decrease with the debit, right? So we're zeroing out the depreciation associated with that truck because it's, it, Thompson's getting rid of the truck. Now, Thompson is going to credit the truck for its original cost, right? Its original cost is $22,000, so it now is removing that from its balance sheet. And so we're actually going to have a plug, right? Because this right here does not equal this right here, right? Because this right here is $22,250. But we have just this credit of $22,000 here for the truck, so we need a plug here of $250 to make sure that our debits and credits balance. And so what is that credit of 250? It's a gain. It's a gain on the exchange. And so if you wanna think about it like this, you say, if, if it's easier for you to think about it as a plug, that's great, but if not, you think about the fair market value of what's being received by Thompson is $4,250. Right, that's this here. Food and cash are getting four thousand two hundred fifty, and then the book value of what's being given up. So given up is four thousand dollars. So giving up four thousand dollars, and you say, where did this four thousand come from? Well, that's the twenty-two thousand original cost minus the eighteen thousand in accumulated depreciation. That gives you four thousand. That's the book value of that truck, and they're giving that up. So then, of course, they will have a gain of 250. But if you just want to think of it as the plug right here, that's that's fine too. Whatever helps you get the answer. So, Bonnie's journal entries from Bonnie's perspective, fair market value of the asset received is going to be four thousand two hundred fifty dollars, right? Because that's the estimated fair market value of the truck. So four thousand two hundred fifty. Bonnie's debiting that, right? Bonnie's receiving that truck that's worth forty two hundred fifty bucks, and then Bonnie is going to credit food for its original cost. Now let's say that the food, the original cost was $2,000. So I'm just gonna put this 2,000, and I, I, maybe I should have been more clear here. So this is gonna be the original cost, right? When you get rid of something off your balance sheet, you're gonna credit it for its original cost, right? Just like over here, the truck, the original cost was 22,000. So here the food, let's say it cost Bonnie 2,000, right? Now. Bonnie also is getting rid of $1,250 cash. So she's going to credit cash for $1,250, okay? Now, there is going to be a plug here for Bonnie, right? Because if we don't have this entry right here, then basically these debits and credits aren't going to balance because we got $4,250, and then these are $3,250. So what needs to happen? Well, we need a $1,000 credit, okay? So this $1,000 credit is going to be a gain, right? It's a gain. Gains increase with credits and losses increase with debits. So if, for example, let's say that our plug was actually a debit over here of a thousand, let's say for example, then we would know, oh, okay, it's a debit, so we'd have a loss on the exchange. But in this case, we end up, we end up having a gain. Now, if you also wanna think about it intuitively, just like we did with Thompson, you could say, okay, what was the fair market value of what was received for Bonnie? Well, it was $4,250, and then the book value of what she gave up, book value of given up, was $3,250, $3,250, and that's just the $2,000 plus the $1,250 cash, okay? So, that being the case, we take the $4,250, subtract the book value, what's given up, we have $1,000 gain.